everybody. Hi, everybody. Today is an amazing, exciting, and awesome session because unlike other days where we have women, today is quite different. We have the men in the house and they'll share their views to listen to, uh, to them, talk about STEM. Uh, for us to be able to, to do some of these things that we've been discussing uh, before, how to uh, achieve gender balance, we need to have the men on board to listen to their views, because we might be here as women, they are trying so hard, but the men don't want us to get to those spaces. So um, I thought it's nice to have their views so that we really know uh, to what direction do we take from this? Do we, include, do we include them in our conversations? How do we want go about this? So we decided to have men in the house today and I'll ask them to introduce themselves one by one. We can start with Ian, then Ken, then Nick, and then Tony will introduce himself and then we'll continue. Yeah, so hi guys, my name is uh, Ian Muridi Mwenda. Um, uh, I'm computer scientist. My undergrad is in computer science. Uh, currently, I'm a system support and implementation engineer. Uh, about, I'm so pleased uh, to be in. I uh, hope to have more input into the conversation and, and so on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian. Ken. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope I'm audible enough. So uh, I'm Ken uh, Kennedy Lumwachi. I am a software engineer. And uh, currently, I do software uh, engineering. Uh, that is software development, the whole cycle, uh, majorly with the NGO, in the NGO sector. Thank you so much, Ken. Um, Hi, everyone. Uh, hope you can hear me clearly. I'm um, Omogutu Nicholas, uh, a computer scientist, a specialist in uh, networking and um, uh, security. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm working in the government. Uh, I deal with network security and uh, providing network support to uh, government staffs. And I'm glad to be part of this conversation. Uh, let's be include uh, STEM. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Nick. Tony? Um, I, I had an undergraduate computer science. I'm a freelance working for transcription, freelance transcription. I think. Uh, so, with discussion, um, uh, according to each of you, uh, do you think I feel or should it be a male uh, agenda for the males? It's open discussion, so uh, we we can. Yeah. So uh, I would like to go first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in other fields, I think no field should be gender defined. I, I am a gender um, equivocal person as well. I support uh, both male and uh, female uh, inputs in whatever field that there is. So I believe them being the field discussion here shouldn't be either gender uh, dominated. I believe in as much as, uh, as men have the same input in STEM, uh, women should also have the same input because it doesn't matter your gender so long as you like you have the ideas the main principles that can transform the industry i believe that you are a man or a woman should it come into play so to answer the question i believe it shouldn't be a made dominated field 
it shouldn't be a female dominated field either i think it should just be like if you are just passionate about if you are just um, a revolutionary about the field you are just passionate about the field well and good it doesn't matter whether you are female or male we should just come together share our ideas to develop the the field so that's my my input um uh, that's amazing um anyone else maybe an additional point or a different opinion on the same okay uh i would like to have my input uh first uh, stem is all mm -hmm. about research uh there's a lot of research that is done in school compared to other other fields so uh research is never complete without women because the moment we start sidelining other genders when it comes to research definitely there is biased so we must include women into research and we must ensure that we empower women so that at least when uh, we are developing systems when we are developing uh, solutions to services women should be part of uh, those solutions so uh, stem should not be as specific as specific field for a specific gender so it should be, we should include uh, all genders and as we talk about women you know let let's also try to include um let's try to include male as well uh, because currently most of the most of the most of the um science uh, science related most of the leaders in science are basically male so the moment we say that we only consider male and we don't have mentors or female mentors or we don't mentor um, male uh, or female counterparts into the field definitely there is a point uh, we won't succeed because uh, female gender has a higher input into science than any other gender because they are diverse in nature what women handle and when we take that advantage and put into science we'll have good results uh, and good solutions for the problems that we currently face. Thank you so much, Nick, for that input. Um, anyone else with a different or that? Okay, uh, I think best based on the. Okay, right now we can uh, we can evaluate uh, the society the way it is right now, and based on that, uh, I feel like we have that need of having uh, women in the STEM generally, because uh, not just, uh, the reason why I'm saying looking, evaluating ourselves is uh, because based on what the technologies that we have currently, uh, you find that uh, at some, not all, not all generally, but uh, at some level, some are biased. Some are biased, that is, if you, if you mm -hmm. look at it on uh, the technological wise, some are biased. And, uh, a simple example that I can I can uh, give you guys is if you look at uh, STEM STEM uh, sciences. If you look at sciences, for instance, the field, the career, um, most of the the safety gears, most of the safety gears that are worn in those field, they are designed for the male counterparts. So uh, you'll find that a lot of women. That is just a rough the the top the top most explanation of why we need why we need uh, women in the sector. Also, another reason is uh, there was a research uh, that was done, I don't know, uh, I can't remember the year, but uh, it proved that uh, increasing the, the female in the, or the women or the girls in the STEM field, it has the ability to increase uh, the uh, global, the GDP by around 12 trillion. By around 12 trillion. So you see, it's a, it's a big number that, uh, it's something that you're missing. Basically. So. Yeah, true. We need we need women in the STEM. Uh, Tony, do you have a different opinion? Yeah, uh, I concur with everything they're saying. Mm -hmm. My thought is that we should have more women in the STEM because mm -hmm. society for the better.
implementation of this society, we need everyone on board. So I want to say to that can create a big to enable the society to become a better place. That's why we need more women, equal as the men in this field. Thank you. So, so in, in addition to, to, uh, to uh, the point there that was mentioned, uh, having uh, women in STEM, uh, it, will, it is very crucial for innovation. Mm -hmm. It's very crucial for innovation. And uh, I can give you some of the, the example uh, on that, how it's very crucial. There was, uh, there was uh, I, I, I generally like to read about the previous challenges that uh, is facing maybe the, the STEM industry or maybe technology, I don't know, I'm more biased to the, the technology side, but uh, based on that, you find that uh, uh, there, was this, there, is, there is this um, room temperature gadget, okay, maybe we are in Africa, it's not commonly used, but if you go to the, uh, the, uh, the other, the countries, uh, maybe in the colder region, uh, the, the, the person who innovated that uh, room, the, the room, whatever, that, the one that controls the temperature in offices was a male. And at first, the ideal temperature that was designed for that equipment was ideal temperature for men to work in there. So, uh, wow. yeah, so uh, after some research, they found out that it was some of biased men. So if there was a woman involved in the whole process, I think we won't have such look look even uh in the in the vehicle industry the car manufacturing the way they even just to go to uh, read read any documentary the dummies that they used to to evaluate the car crash incident they used the dummies which are more sidelined to to the to the male body however but if you look at the accident you find that women are 47 percent higher chance of having a fatal injury during an, an accident. But if you look at how those uh, safety measures they are being tested, it's more biased to women. So it's very crucial for innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken, for that. Uh, so uh, that brings us to um, the, the next question, because we've all agreed this is agenda for both uh, uh, this is a space for both genders. Why do you think that STEM is still a male-dominated field? It has been since the days in the beginning, and it is still a male-dominated field. Why do you think, uh, despite uh, you agreeing that this is a space for both genders, why is it and has been a male-dominated field? Okay, I may start. Huh? Okay, fine. Um, STEM is still a, a male-dominated uh, field because one, there are so many, there are so many people at the top. There are very few female who can work as who can be role models to a young women, so that they propel them to higher, to the higher levels. Because you know, when we have when you have a uh, very few female at the top. That means uh, when, a, when, when a, say a female student is trying to work hard and move at the top, you know, she will, she will not be motivated well enough, she will not be well motivated to, you know, to work hard and uh, try to be the man because at a point on that, as she tries to move, you know, there's no, there's no one else to hold her hand. So we, we need we need uh, we need uh, you know female at the top so that as as uh, as the young the young the young uh, the young female are trying to you know work hard they at least have someone to look at and say at least as I work hard there's someone who will uh, will hold my hand when I'm you know I'm demotivated and I'm you know I've 
I have nothing else to you know to look at. So the moment we have more uh, female role models, then there will be more uh, female at the top. Two, there's this uh, aspect of anxiety. You know, like uh, when you look at schools, you know, schools are what mod is what models you know the female into into STEM. When you look at subjects like mathematics, you know, we have few uh, female mathematics teachers compared to, to male teachers. So there's that anxiety, you know, a female student will look at math and say, you know, th th this thing is not working for me. So the moment you start having anxiety at early stages, that means uh, you will not be motivated to start uh, studying in STEM fields. Uh, then lastly, we have this, the culture we call uh, male-dominated culture. So the, the moment we start uh, STEM is a male-dominated culture, that means we are not encouraging our young women. So we should, we should start uh, demystify the fact that uh, STEM is a male-dominated culture. The moment we demystify that, then we'll be encouraging our female into studying um, uh, STEM-related fields. So I think that's it for me. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, uh, Ken, do you have something on why STEM is still a male dominated field? Yeah, uh, I, I have idea. Two points. Huh? Uh, one of it is uh, what Nick has said. Uh, the current, uh, the, the girls, the young girls who are in school right now, they, they lack people to look up to. They don't have the, the role models. So if you if you tell if you tell your daughter, um, you can take this career path, and at the end of it, she doesn't see anybody any female uh, in that in that uh, speciality of the career. So she, she lacks that motivational and somebody to look at, to, to look up to. And uh, another cause of uh, why, uh, it's because the policies that we have, the policies that we have, uh, some might not be favoring the, the female gender, majorly, even the workplace policies. Uh, if, if you look at this career, the STEM careers, uh, for instance, uh, just imagine of any uh, STEM, STEM career and take, for instance, the working environment. Most of them you'll find that the environment is not favorable to the, to the female. Uh, that is also one of it. And uh, the third point is awareness, 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 awareness. That is what I'll, I'll, I'll stress on. Uh, there, there, there is lack of awareness. The girls in school, they're not aware that this is something. And at least right now, we are a bit glad uh, for people like, uh, like uh, you, Brenda, and other activists. What, what's happening is the raising of that awareness so that people will be able to understand that there is a gap here. If 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 you Google uh, if you just Google uh, girls, I'm a woman. If you Google women and stem the two words, and then try to see the number of scholarships that you get there, it's a lot. But our girls are not aware of all those opportunities. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ken. Um, Ian. Yeah. So. The reason I think that STEM is still male dominated is because I feel like uh, women are dealing with so much more. For example, if we, so much um, uh, other issues, for example, like female genital mutilation, uh, whether it comes to maybe marital expectations, women are expected to go in and out of their way, maybe to fulfill the husband's expectations. In so so much so that women do not have the enough time that they they need to have to dedicate their time and research maybe into 
the STEM uh, industry, that is the sciences, mathematics, maybe research and technology and so on. So I kind of feel like the African woman has so much to deal with, whether it's from the society expectations of a woman, like how a woman is supposed to behave, how young girls are supposed to behave, as opposed to the, to the boy child. I kind of feel like it, it weighs so much on the girl child that it doesn't allow her to venture into, into science, into the STEM field. So I kind of feel like they don't have the same amount of time that the boy child has to venture into research, to venture into science, technology, innovation, and so on. So at the, the cumulative effect is that at the end of the day, the field will have more men as opposed to women because uh, men have more time to decide what they want, to do, to do the research that they want, to collect more research data than women have. Uh, you can take a scenario whereby a man and a woman, they are in the STEM field, so they are all supposed to submit a research project. Probably maybe the woman is pregnant, maybe they are married, or maybe they are committed somewhere. The, the man that has to do is that go, go to the field and collect the data they are supposed to collect. As opposed to the woman, they have to know what will my child feed on in the evening. Of course, they will not feed on this research data. They will not uh, feed on this uh, research that I'm doing or whatever project that I'm carrying on. But also for the man, you just have yourself to handle. At the end of the day, maybe you just go back to you, maybe your wife's home, yeah, food is ready and, and so on. So I kind of feel that, like it's an, an uneven playing ground for women as compared to, to men. So that's why I think that the male uh, the STEM is still male dominated as of today. Thank you so much, Ian. Uh, Tony? Yes, yeah, thank you for that question. I think the reason why we are having challenges is because women are perceived as less competitive. So in this field, the men think women won't bring much input for their, for their projects or anything they want to do, which sets them back. And another point is complex work schedule. The schedule in working environment in, in a STEM is very, so, is very tiresome that it drains even the female in that field. They have to work more extra than the male counterparts. So, who have less effort to do whatever they want to do, unlike the female in the industry. And I want to say again, there's an supportive and working environment in the same field because there are a lot of men at the top and the fear overtaken by the female counterparts. So the field rather than the female, which makes the field with more men than women. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for answering that. Actually, you've answered uh, reasons that hinder women from joining these spaces. So thank you so much. You've actually uh, written so many points, more than 10. Thank you so much, guys, for highlighting that. Um, so uh, with us uh, not being able to achieve gender balance right now, like we don't have the gender balance right now, do you think we'll ever achieve gender balance? Uh, tomorrow, the day after, um, do you think there's a point that we'll get to we'll be able to achieve gender balance? If no, why do you think so? And if yes, uh, in what ways are we going to be able to achieve this gender balance? Um, Nick, you can start. Okay, I can start. Uh, first, huh? let, let me say uh, we, we are really moving slow on uh, trying to achieve gender balance. Yes, there is a time that uh, we'll achieve it, but you cannot achieve it without uh, putting in more effort. You know, there are so many factors that are hindering uh, us from achieving gender balance. And uh, the process will be slow, 
but uh, if we commit to it and uh, work towards the best ways of achieving gender balance, then we will. We need uh, several things in place. Things like one, we need the institutional uh, uh, institutional infrastructures that will help us achieve gender balance. For example, like uh, when you look at most of the rural areas, most of these institutions do not offer uh, courses that are related to STEM. Mo most of them offer courses that are, you know, are towards uh, social and uh, other other fields than than STEM. So the moment uh, we start uh, having institutions that offer STEM specifically for women, then we will be moving uh, a step towards achieving gender balance. Second, you know, achieving gender balance first starts from, you know, the lower levels. Uh, if we not, if, if we do not start being uh, fair to our women while they are still young, then we will never achieve it. But we need to start being fair to our women at early stages of their lives. You know, most in our society, we, we you know, we lie to our women so much eh, that we don't give them opportunity to, you know, work hard and uh, be as men. Because we start telling them that first, you you know, the moment a woman is born, she will do that, uh, just stay in the father's house for a very short time, then get married. That's not supposed to be the case. A woman should be empowered the same way a man is empowered. So therefore, when we start at early ages, we, when we start empowering our women, we take them to school at early ages, then we remove a lot of loads that we put on them because a, a girl will, uh, at an early stage, start cooking for the family, and yet the boy will be just doing his his own stuff. So we need to be start, we need to start being fair to women at early stages. With that, we will achieve gender balance. So in, in the 21st century where we are talking about had women go to the moon, we are talking about lives and in several explorations, in the first century where we are talking about country, world United States of America, who is a woman. So there's no way, there's no explainable scenario as shouldn't have women leaders in the STEM industry. This has been done before, it has been done elsewhere. So there is no explainable scenario as to why we shouldn't have women in the STEM. And uh, I say with this with a, a little bit of uh, optimism because it has done, been done before. Whatever that we need in Kenya or in Africa is just the right policies that encourage young girls to take up mathematics and sciences in early childhood uh, courses or in early childhood setups because um, I believe all this comes up as a cumulative um, uh, childhood growth process. For example, if you encourage from like early childhood classes up to middle primary, up to upper primary, if you can have our young girls explore these fields when they are young, there is no reason as to why they should not explore the same into high school and into universities and into uh, high, uh, schools of, of higher learning. So I believe it all rolls down to having the right policies, having the the, 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 the right the constitutional amendments to enable our young girls uh, to, un to undertake or partake some of these uh, ventures. Uh, we also need to have the um, um, some kind of uh, policies to enable young women self-help groups or our women self-help group um, uh, uh, foundations into establishing maybe vendors in the STEM industry. And I believe that will roll over. It will have like a little bit of a cumulative effect into young girls who want to join the field who's already they have seen other women who have made it into the sector. And then they are able now to borrow into the same kind of role model or the same setup 
then they are able to establish their careers and develop the develop them up to the end. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ian. Ken. Uh, uh, there, there are main points that uh, we need to emphasize from uh, those who have talked about the same point before. Uh, policies, whatever, we, we cannot say that it's not a matter of can it be done or is it possible or not possible. It's a matter of let's start doing it. And uh, what Iana said, we can, the policies, the policies and awareness. That's the first step. It's 21st century and we cannot uh, weigh ourselves. For in, 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 um, in the world, uh, you, you see that only a quarter of, uh, let's say, if you take the number of all the scientists, uh, or let's say computer scientists, you'll find that it's only a quarter, around 25% are women. So, the pol for me, I think the policies, the policies can work. Then we also uh, do some awareness on it. And the societal norms that we have, especially now that we are in Africa, uh, there, there's some, the norms in the society, the society, how it, uh, how it, how it looks at uh, the women and the men. The two genders, it, uh, there is a different, there is some biasness in need when it comes to the STEM, the STEM field. So uh, policies and awareness, that's something that we need to, to look in, deeply into it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tony. Yes, I think we will be able to achieve the gender balance if only we increase mentorship and supportive leadership to our women and to take up the STEM courses and guide them through it, give them self-motivation for, for doing the STEM-related courses so that they can increase the number they can be, and while increasing the number they can be at par with the male counterparts and we should also create more awareness on same courses as early as the primary primary school level so that they may grow up knowing what they want to do and they may get interested in it for doing everything they want and another way of achieving it is giving the same value for women who work in the STEM course as compared as the way their value seems to the male. They shouldn't be underpaid or being looked down in anything that they do because they are women. And we should also empower not only the children alone but their parents their society outside so that they may encourage them to undertake every same any same course so that they can they may know if they uh, if they if they engage in same courses they might as well come back and help their society through the same related careers thank you uh, thank you so much, guys. I like how you you all agreed that at some point, someday, we'll be able to actually achieve this gender balance. Uh, in the beginning, there is an, uh, there's something that uh, uh, Nick talked about, like uh, there are very few women uh, at the top. We have so many males at the top. And all along, we've discussed about uh, mentorship uh i think most of us have said something about mentorship and all that so i'd like to pose one question is it possible for a female to have a, a male mentor in stem see many men in the stem spaces and there are very few we uh, for us to be able to achieve this balance is it possible for a male to 
actually mentor a, a girl, a, a woman uh, into the STEM? Yes, uh, let me start first. Huh? You know, when it comes to mentorship, you know, gender doesn't matter. A male, you know, a male uh, mentor can well work with a, a female, a young female, and mentor that that uh, you know girl into someone uh, who can really, you know, put value into the STEM industry. So gender doesn't matter. So when it comes to mentorship, for example, I personally, I have, I have, I, have, I think, three girls that uh, I work with. And I have a program, you know, online. I train uh, these girls on how to, you know, use technology and uh, uh, try to, you know, make a living from it. And they're really doing well because girls are very committed when, when they decide to do something they do it to their best so when i agree that it's very possible to have a male a male mentor who can uh, you know take our girls through the best path to follow uh into the stem industry and guide them well on uh, how to be successful can ian tell me uh, do you think uh, it is possible for a girl to have a male mentor? Yeah, it's very much possible. Uh, for instance, uh, if, if you are a father of a daughter, you can mentor your kid to, to STEM. So as uh, what Nick has stated, it's, it's not a matter of mentorship, uh, it's not based on the gender. Anybody can mentor, even, even uh, male or even boys. Boys can be mentored into STEM by women. So uh, it's possible, yeah. Ian? Yeah, so I believe a man can mentor a girl to be the STEM engineer that they want to be and to ask your question maybe i would like to give you an example so albert einstein's uh, secretary was a was a female she was called helen lucas at the end of the day albert einstein's secretary co-authored albert einstein's book on creator and rebel and also co-edited albert einstein's book on the on the human side so in, 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 in as much as we are talking about um, uh, male or, or, or men mentoring other young, maybe upcoming engineers who are female, I believe it's been done. It was done in the 17th century. So as to why it can't be done in the 21st century beats, beats logic for me. So if Albert Einstein could do it in the, the 17th century, why can't can it be in the 21st century, as in why, why? There's no explainable solution or scenario as why it can't be done, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tony? I think it's possible for a man to mentor because they have more knowledge and experience and with the good ethical behavior and conduct, they might be able to uh, who handle this female counterpart and lead them to their to their career? I, I believe in this world we are never in a race. We are never in a race with each other. Rather, we are in a work together towards our destiny. So holding each other and mentoring, we can bond for a, for a better society. Yeah, and we, we, because we live. In this world together, we always have to work together in oneness so that we can achieve greatness. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tony, for that. Actually, you highlighted something very important, uh, ethical behavior and conduct. I think that's where at times uh, female uh, 
they might feel uh, I really won't be able to cope up with a male um, mentor. But if we have that ethical behavior and conduct, actually, that's very possible. I like it how you all agree that it is very yeah, possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Brenda, just be, yeah, so I just wanted to have a little bit of on, on input. So I clearly mentioned Albert Einstein's secretary. She was called Helen Dukas Bede. She was a female. So after Albert Einstein passed Bede, do you know that Helen was, according to Albert Einstein's last testament, Helen Dukas was supposed to hold the literary rights to all Albert Einstein's manuscripts, copyrights, vacation rights, royalty, and royalty agreements. So there is no explainable scenario as to why a man shouldn't mentor a woman who is upcoming in the, in the STEM sector. Yeah. Thank you so much. Even, 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 even uh, just an addition to that, huh? if, if you look at even the history, the first computer programmers, they were women. If you look at yeah, a woman. Yeah, it was a woman. If you look at uh, this language, JavaScript, JavaScript is one of the fastest growing language in programming, and it was invented by a, a woman by the name Brenda. So it, I think it's just the, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. even, even the yeah, I'm saying even the so it was a woman who designed and created the assembly language that was used in the first computers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So I think it's possible to have more women in this field uh, if they are mentored. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for that discussion. Uh, anyone with uh, something they've left up, maybe they've left out, maybe, and they want to uh, say it before we go to the next meeting. Out of all that we've discussed, okay. Uh, if we discuss everything, that's perfect. So I'll ask. A, 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 a very simple question. Uh, given a time, uh, you guys uh, want to have a STEM discussion with a woman. Um, you want to sit on the same position, making tables with a woman for STEM. You want to make, to have a conversation about STEM with a woman. Uh, I would like you guys to name three women that those women will be and tell us why you're choosing those women. Anyone can start. <laughs> oh, okay, let, let me start. Eh? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, basically, for my case, I've, I've worked under women leadership, you know, for almost three years. Eh? And I've interacted with women. They are good leaders. So the, the, the ones I can suggest is one, uh, Eunice Kariuki. She was a former director, uh, ICT authority. She, She's so passionate about technology and everything she posts on Twitter is all about technology and women empowerment. So she can be one of the best mentors to our girls and uh, you know one of the contributors to this dis discussion. Then the second woman is, um, she's, she's called uh, Kate Gitao. Kate Gitao, she's, uh, she's the CEO of ICT Authority. She's also one of the best, best women uh interested in women leadership and uh you know, empowering our women then lastly i'll uh the, the last person is um uh, uh, she's called uh, cecil cecil uh the second name is a bit difficult okay. but, but uh yeah I'll, uh, I'll i'll text you the name yeah she's also so passionate about technology and uh, you know the three names have given you their, their role in uh, information technology so they can be perfect for uh, they can be perfect mentors to our, to our girls yes. uh, thank you so 
so much, Nick. That's amazing. At least you have uh, women that you actually admire, you, you trust that they can make decisions with you, uh, form decisions. That's amazing. Um, uh, Ian? Ian? Okay, okay. okay. So, the three women that I would, I would mm -hmm. really nominate for the maybe STEM talk. Well, so one of them is uh, is Esther Ruto. So uh, maybe few of you know about Esther Ruto. So Esther Ruto is the general manager in charge of the power distribution and regional production directorate at Kenya's Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation. So Ruto is still one of the very few women in the field. I experience in women in the field, I experience in school reflects the, what has been dubbed as a, as, as, a, as, a leaky, as a leaky pipeline, as in fewer girls pursue these degrees based in STEM after high school, even uh, after STEM awareness talks are done and, and so on. So the, those would be among my most key, most key highlights for the people that dominate among the STEM talk. Um, the next one will be probably my mom, <laughs> uh, because uh, I personally believe charity begins at home. So I kind of feel if I don't empower the women in my circle, women in my family to enroll in some of these STEM talks and some of these STEM um, related uh, topics, I, I kind of feel like I'm reaching beyond my, my reach because if uh, they say charity begins at home so if i can't inspire the same kind of um, the same kind of passion within my own family there's no reason as to why i should seek to inspire other women who might not even know me personally whom i might not know personally so i kind of feel so the second woman will be um, probably the dad my sister i could i, I, I could go on trying to reach um, among women in my sector, but uh, Esther Ruto stands, she's already in the, in the energy sector, um, the distribution industry. So I kind of feel if I could inspire probably my, my sister, who as well is into the chemical uh, industry and manufacturing sector, to venture into STEM, technology, mathematics. I kind of feel like I would reach to so many other women, women because if I can be able to inspire my own sister, it means I could reach to so many other girls who my sister has access to, whom those people, it's kind of like a ripple effect, you know? Like you can't try to inspire other women miles, miles and miles away from you if you are not already inspiring young girls in your village, young girls within your family, your cousins who are females as well. So I kind of feel it's it's a, it's a ripple effect. So those are my three nominations for the, for the STEM talk. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian, for that. Actually, I'm excited to have your mother on this conversation. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, Ken? Okay, me, I'll, I'll just add uh, another woman on top of the list. Uh, uh, on top of Amanda, I can only mention one. Uh, uh, she goes okay. by the name uh, Sylvia Mulinga. I'm sure you guys know, know her. I mean, uh, that, that woman, whatever she has been able to achieve. Damn, yes. Right, so. <laughs> yeah, so if, if there is one person I'd like to sit yeah. in the same room and discuss some of this position, it's her. Yeah. Yeah. She's the CEO wow. of Safaricom, for those who don't know. I agree, agree. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I also love Sylvia a lot. She, she's done a lot. And I like one of her phrases where she says, I, I would like to travel on the roads, least travel. And I'm like, that's what I also want. I want to travel on those roads that are least traveled. Um, Tony? She was on Safaricom. And back in 2015, the leader that undertook the project of migrating the 
and petrol servers from Germany to Kenya. She was basically the top person there. Uh, uh, collaborating with the South Africans, but she was the one on top, ensuring everything happened and it went smoothly and brought and pets her home. And another one could be Juliana Rotich, she's the co-founder of IHAB. Under her, she's been able to she's been able to see many startups, even mentor young people in the tech world and everything. She'll be a better person to talk to and sit at the table and be mentored. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, guys, for those women. I, I'm actually surprised some I didn't know, but at least I've recorded them. I'm going to research about all those women. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing session. I'm so glad you guys have been on board for this. I really appreciate um, Asante Nisana. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as well, because uh, whatever you're doing, it's part of the solution that uh, we have been discussing. So, thanks a lot. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for having us on board. It, it, it has been a very energetic and, uh, you know, educative session. I know what you're doing is inspiring a lot of women out here. And uh, with having a more of you around, uh, having more of you talk about this topic will help us achieve what we are inspiring to achieve, gender balance. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, thank you for the amazing work you're doing. And I believe people like you will lead us to an equitable STEM related a STEM environment where we both genders are. Thank you, thank you so much, Tony, for that. Um, yeah, do you have something to say as we close? Uh, so we can close. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I hope to see you and more of you in these discussions. Thank you so much. Uh, this discussion, I'm sure it will go a long way. And uh, as women, we need to embrace the discussion. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.